Let us pray. Dear gracious and loving Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for all you've done and all you're going to do. I ask you, Lord, to bless your word. Open it up to us. Help us receive your word, what you'd have us receive. Lead us, guide us, and direct us, O oh Lord. Show us your will and your way in all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us turn to Mark chapter 12, starting with the 30th verse. That's Mark chapter 12, starting with the 30th verse. That's Mark chapter 12, starting with the 30th verse. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is, is like, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. In fact, Pretty much all the laws of God are consolidated in those two commands. But many people get sidetracked and they start loving other things more than God. And when they do that, they take and lose their way. They just don't know where to go. Like, why did they go, George? Why did they go? I'll go, I'll find them. I'm their leader. <laughs> because they just can't help but be lost because they've lost track of what was truly important. And it's important that we take and hold on to what is important. Keep our priorities right. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Oh, I've been in many ministers' meetings which they lecture the ministers, you've got to put your family first. No. You've got to put God first. That's something God requires of all of us is that we put Him first. If we put Him first, we'll take care of our families. That, that's not a, a problem. And as long as we're putting Him first, everything else will fall in its right place. It's kind of like the story about the teacher that brought in the aquarium into his classroom and he had buckets of rocks and of gravel and sand and water. And he went through and he filled the aquarium up with rocks. Asked his students, is it full? And he said, oh, yep, 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 it's full, it's full. Then he, uh, then he goes through and he put, uh, put, puts gravel in there and shakes it and has more gravel and shakes it and grab, has more gravel. So finally it's to the top of gravel. Is it full now? Well, oh, yep, yep, uh -huh. yeah, it's full. No. He went through and added sand and worked it in to the sand with the top. Well, is it full now? And finally there was a bright student of that. Well, no, 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 it's not filling yet. He says, you're right. He poured water in. The water all the way up to the top. He says, now, uh, what does this tell? What is the importance of this illustration? And one of those smart, educated types, you know, that college has so much of, <laughs> raises his hand in the back of the class, and he says, well, professor, Obviously, what you're trying to put across is there's always room for something else. And the professor said, no, that's not it at all. If you don't put the big rocks in first, you'll never get them in at all. It is important that you have your priorities right. Put the big rocks in first. Love the Lord thy God. First, Amen. then love your neighbor as yourself. You gotta have everything in its right order. 
If he had have taken and put the sand in first, you'd have never got the rocks in. If he had to put the water in first, he would have made a horrible mess. If he had to go, everything had to go in in its right and correct order. And that's one thing we need to watch in our society. It's easy to get sidetracked and to take and go through and put the wrong things in the wrong orders in our lives. Because we've got so many things drawing on us and pulling at us and trying to lead us away. Luke chapter 14. That's Luke chapter 14, starting with the 14th verse. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said it unto him, Blessed is he that eateth bread in the kingdom of God. He said, then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. And he sent his servant at supper time, and said to them <coughs> that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make an excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need go see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. These are essentially the same excuses people make right now for not taking and coming to God. For not serving Him. Well, if I go to God, I'll have to give something up. They don't want to give up their possessions. Now, I grant you that where I'm from, they have names for people who buy property without saving it. <laughs> but yet here this guy claims he's never seen his property that he's just bought. The fact is, is that possessions in many people's lives take and consume them. If they overcome them, they become the center point of everything in their lives. And therefore, they become their gods. A god doesn't have to be carved out of stone someplace. Or wood. or A god can be anything. Anything you're worshiping is your god. One minister one time said, what you turn to in your time of need, that is your God. If you turn to alcohol in your time of need, then alcohol is your God. If you take a turn to money in your time of need, money is your God. If you turn to God in your time of need, then God's your God. What it is what do you rely upon? What is important in your life? This first individual was essentially what today we refer to as a workaholic. Not work, I mean, the first, second individual. The second individual was essentially was what we would call a workaholic. Well, business got, has got to come first. There are times when business has to be set aside for God. There's many times in which Business would be an easy excuse for many people. And many people use it as an excuse. But it's only temporary. Your work won't last forever. For one thing, we'll all die sometime. And another thing, 
a lot of us will take and get to a point where we can't do it at some point in time in our lives. We just physically won't be capable. So if you're worshiping your work, what are you going to do when you don't got it anymore? We live in a society that currently the real unemployment rate and the real unemployment rate is not what the government gives you. The government takes out anybody who quit looking for a job. The unemployment uh, the, they state that the real unemployment rate is almost 20% of the population. So there's a lot of people that were working, now aren't. If they're, worship, if they're worshiping their work, what have they got now? Then there's those that retire. Some places, after you reach a certain age, they ask you to go. Not sure that's legal, but they do it anyway. It comes down to work is a temporary thing. And if we're using it to sell, try to fill God's place in our lives, if we're trying to fit that God hole in our lives with work, we're going to be disappointed. And the third most common, which Christ here mentions, family. It's amazing how many people I've, I've talked to personally. Well, well, I can't be a Christian. My family would turn on me. They wouldn't tolerate it. We've got to choose what is more important. If we put our family before God, it will destroy our souls. God must come first. They took and accused many ministers for why their children rebelled and went out into sin. So, well, it's obvious because they didn't place their children before the church and God. No, those ministers that placed God first their children continued with God. It's those that don't have their priorities right. And let's face it, when it comes to your children, you have no control of what they do once they get grown anyway. Who can truly account and, and be accountable for their own children's actions after they reach adulthood? We don't tie them up in a corner and say, yeah, you're going to have to do it. <laughs> They're responsible for themselves after a certain point in time. And blaming somebody for serving, somebody serving God for why their children went the wrong way is like taking Scripture and dumping it on its head. Your children make their own choices. But at least if you're living for God, you'll leave them a pattern to know how to live for God themselves. Amen. Now they have to make that choice. But it's not something that we have any control over. As y'all know, I've got five children. Three are here. One's in Illinois, and one's in Virginia. How could I make somebody in Virginia or Illinois do anything? Driving. <laughs> <laughs> Even that wouldn't work. It would still have to be a voluntary thing. The fact is, is that we all make choices over what's important in our lives. We all determine what is going to be first in our lives. 
Matthew chapter 6. Of course, you know why Lee looked at my notes before he handed it over. He was verifying that I wasn't going to take and keep going so long that he'd miss out on lunch. Oh, that knows me well. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. What he doesn't realize is just because it's in my notes doesn't mean I'm going to use it. <laughs> Just because you're talking doesn't mean we can't all leave and go to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, starting with the 19th verse. Lay not for, uh, up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where steal, uh, thieves break in through to steal. But lay up your, tre yourselves treasures in heaven, that neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When we take a look at priorities, <coughs> and we're focusing on the spiritual, and we're focusing on God, He makes everything work out here. Amen. But if we're focusing on the things here, nothing seems to work out right. So it is important that we have uh, that we lay our treasures up where it's most important. What is money? Money is an object that humans have placed a, a value for and state that you can receive this or that. If you give me that piece of paper, I will give you this object. That's essentially what money is. They used to be uh, the metal. In fact, we still have some coins. Then it went, and then it went to, and before that, different types of shells and in some cultures certain types of cord, knotted cords were the money and other cultures sand dollars were money that's actually where they get their name by the way and some other cultures salt so Money is not something that inherently is valuable. Only we place value in it. It becomes a means of exchange. And no amount of money is worth our soul. Amen. There's nothing here on earth that's worth that. Because nothing here on earth lasts. Only heaven truly lasts. So it's important that we lay up our treasures in the right places. Amen. So that God gets the glory. So that God is the one who's honored. So that truly we make it to the right place. When we look at what our priorities, are we putting the big rocks in first? So much time was spent trying to make things fit that don't fit. And they won't fit. It's kind of like the guy who, he went into one of these te uh, tests and uh, where they put in the different shaped objects into the blocks. And after a while, the guy who was monitoring the, the test came, ba uh, came back and told the Guy was running and everything. We got a problem on our hands. What do you mean? Well, he stuck the square peg in the round hole and we can't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> but 
There's certain things that just don't fit. God wants us to keep our priorities right. He should come first. Amen. God should always come first in our lives. And then other people should carry the same weight with us as ourselves. You know, that's very rare in the United States. The United States has got this concept of looking after number one. And when they talk about that, they're talking about themselves. Biblically speaking, there isn't supposed to be a number one here except God. And the rest of us are all on the same playing field. We're all on the same level. Oh, I grant you, there's things that each of you can do that I couldn't dream of doing. And I'm sure there's some things I can do that y'all can't do. That's just the that's just being human. And that's a good thing, because it means that we don't all have to be good at everything. But when it comes to the eyes of God, He looks out across us and views us all on the same level. And then the choice comes in, have we accepted Jesus Christ our personal Savior? Are we living for Him? Is He first in our lives? Or are we placing other things first? Where is our treasure? Are we spending our time chasing after the Joneses? Well, they got a brand new car and I haven't had one in six months. <laughs> God doesn't want us to be that way. We should be thankful for what God gives us and be thankful for what God gives others. Amen. And then turn around and pray for them when they are when they are in need and be there to help each other out. Amen. Why? Because God loves you. And He wants us to share His view and share what He considers important. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now here it's making reference to not to worry about clothes or food. Seek first the kingdom of God and then He'll take care of it all. As long as God and a relationship with God is placed in preeminence, He fills the gaps. He takes care of us. But He must come first. James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? We can claim to place God first all we want, but if, unless we're actually living it, it's obvious we're not. What is important to us will show in our daily lives. Our priorities come out and everyone can see them. What do we place first? What is most important to us? And then what falls in the following layers later? Like those rocks going in. The big rocks first, then the gravel, then the sand, then the water. 
Everything has to go in at the right order. Any other order, and it's disaster. And not everything's going to fit. When we, if we truly have faith in God, it's going to show in our lives and how we live them. In our modern society, there are many that, well, it's all right to serve God, but just don't go through and let anybody know. I'm sorry, if you're serving God, everybody's going to know. Because you can't hide it. There are cases after cases after cases where a Christian goes and visits someone who's living in sin and they can get irate and upset and nothing has been said. Because they feel guilty over how they're living because of the very presence of the Christian. Why is, why is it? Because the person's living their faith. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're going forth and being God's people. 1 John chapter 1, verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not tell the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So if we're walking as we're supposed to be walking, if we're walking in the light, we're walking as God commands, it automatically brings fellowship together with others who are doing the same. Amen. And God gets the glory. And people get saved and redeemed from their sins. But for this to happen, we must place God first. Amen. Priorities are vitally important. What is first in your life? What do you consider to be important? If your priorities are wrong, the end can be disastrous. Let's place God first. Seek His kingdom. And place Him first in our lives and let Him transform and make everything new. Amen.